గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ చిల్డ్రన్ ఈరోజు మనం కోఆర్డినేషన్ అనేటువంటి పాఠం చెప్పుకోవచ్చు రైట్ కోఆర్డినేషన్ దిస్ ఈజ్ a fifth lesson from our 10th class biology textbook the heading of the lesson is telling us that coordination must be occurs in our body organs for example if i want to move from here to there i use it to move my hands and legs and my eyes also working when i am doing that work so here for a little work i am using my eyes and legs and hands here uh, these three are uh, working together so in this way in our every action our body parts and body organs have to be coordinate one and each other you know in our body there are uh, 13 systems are working so these 13 systems are working uh, continuously each other right uh, for example a nervous system and a skeletal system and then uh, excretory system from digestive system these all systems are uh, working together okay so the coordination must be occurs between uh, these uh, uh, organ systems okay uh, not only between the organ systems in our uh, every activity every work we have to coordinate our organs also by our consciousness so here i would like to say is uh, coordination must be occurs in our body between organs and organ systems right here i would like to say uh coordination is uh, depend on mostly in uh, two systems they are first one nervous system second one hormone system hormone system so these are two two systems so coordination is uh, occurs uh, in these two systems okay if these two systems not working in our uh, in our body properly there is no uh, work done properly within our body so these two systems are mainly responsible for the coordination in our body right uh, let us uh, discuss uh, first uh, system nervous system nervous system nervous system okay all you know our nervous system is uh, made up of uh, nerves or neurons nerves or neurons uh, first first uh, the scientist called uh, galen uh, told us the nerves are mainly are of two types first one is sensory nerve or uh, second one is uh, motor nerve so nerves are mainly are of two types sensory nerve and motor nerve uh, this is uh, told by a uh, galen scientist scientist called uh, galen clear who is that galen he is a scientist told us that uh, uh, nerves are mainly are of two types first one is uh, sensory nerve and second one is uh, motor nerve clear next we well, have to discuss about uh, uh, sometimes scientists mentioned in our textbook uh, first one um, stephen hales Stephen Hales and also Leonardo da Vinci Leonardo da Vinci these are two scientists they told us that our spinal cord is made up of a number of neurons number of neurons this is not a solid structure it is containing a number of neurons and it is participating in every action with the help of our nerves so the spinal cord is a most important thing in our spinal uh, in our nervous system which is mentioned by scientist called stephen hales and uh, leonardo da vinci clear leonardo da vinci leonardo da vinci da vinci and um stephen hales stephen hales these are two scientists uh, worked on uh, spinal cord and told us that th- this is most important part in uh, 
uh, nervous system and it is consist of a uh, uh, number of nerves and it is uh, playing a main role in uh, every activity within our body right. Next I have to discuss about uh, uh, some uh, uh, definitions for the response and stimulus response and stimulus response and stimulus ok. Let us uh, talk about the stimulus first. Stimulus are stimuli, stimulus or stimuli are uh, um, impulse. Okay, these three are uh, same in the nature. The, it has uh, two other names. Stimulus has uh, two other names: uh, stimuli and impulse. Stimuli and impulse. What is meaning of stimulus is the change in the atmosphere, the change in the atmosphere, clear. For example, if I am standing here, if anybody touches me here or anywhere, immediately I feel that, immediately I feel that, okay. The touch is impulse, my feeling is a response, the touch is a impulse, my feeling is response. Here the touch is a change, the touch is a change in the atmosphere. The touch is a change in the atmosphere. If students are sitting in the classroom, uh, if teacher comes in the classroom, immediately the students use it to stand when they saw the teacher. So, coming of the teacher into the classroom is a stimulus, standing of the students is called response. Here, coming of the teacher into the classroom is a stimulus, it is a change in the atmosphere, it is a change in the atmosphere. In this way, the changes in the atmosphere is called stimulus. Our actions towards the stimulus is called a response, okay. So, stimulus is nothing but the change in the atmosphere, stimulus is nothing but the change in the atmosphere and the response is nothing but the actions towards the impulse, the actions towards the impulse is called the response. For example, all you know uh, when we go outside from the room, if sunlight falls on our uh, eye surface, immediately we used to close our uh, eyes like this. So, the sunlight is impulse and uh, closing of uh, our eyes is a response. Like this, uh, if any stimulus is there, there should be a response. Is it clear? Let us discuss about a classification of a nervous system right now. Classification of classification of nervous system. Classification of nervous system. Nervous system is mainly are of uh, two types. Nervous system is mainly are of two types. First one is central nervous system, central nervous system, second one is peripheral nervous system, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Again the central nervous system is classified into two types that is brain and spinal cord, brain and spinal cord. So, this is the classification of our nervous system. Nervous system is a of two types, central nervous system, peripheral nervous system. Again central nervous system is classified into two types and brain and spinal cord. Again I would like to say the classification of the brain, the classification of the brain. Brain is again classified into three parts. First one is forebrain, second one midbrain, third one hindbrain, third one hindbrain. Again forebrain is classified into three types or three parts. Olfactory lobes and second one is cerebrum, third one is diencephalon, 
dian cephalon these are three parts in the fore brain okay hind brain also classified into two types again that is cerebellum and medulla oblongata medulla oblongata these are parts in the brain brain is classified into four uh, three parts fore brain mid brain and hind brain again fore brain is uh, classified into three parts olfactory lobes cerebrum and diencephalon and uh, cerebellum and medulla oblongata are parts of uh, hind brain here you have to see and uh, you have to clean and keen observe here diencephalon is again classified into two parts thalamus and uh, hypothalamus thalamus and hypothalamus thalamus and hypothalamus you know hypothalamus is uh, belongs to hormone system hypothalamus is belongs to hormone system in the hypothalamus uh, part we can see a gland called pituitary gland pituitary gland which is most important gland in our body which secretes uh, hormones and it is also called as master gland it is also called as master gland okay so master gland is locates in the hypothalamus area hypothalamus is a part of diencephalon diencephalon is a part of fore brain is it clear right let us discuss about uh, nerve cells why should we learn about nerve cell first <laughs> because the entire central and peripheral nerve system entire systems are made up of nerve cells only if we talk about a brain there is nerve cells if you talk about spinal cord there is also nerves so entire nervous system is made up of nerve cells okay so everywhere in our nervous system we can find uh, nerve cells that is why let us discuss about uh, nerve cell first okay uh, nerve cell i will draw here the structure of the nerve cell this is a general a structure of the nerve cell general structure of the nerve cell in the nerve cell we can find three important three important parts first one is cell body or cyton cell body or cyton and axon and dendrites dendrites so in the nerve cell there is a important part it is a wider part this wider part is called cell body it consists of prominent structure nucleus okay nucleus okay from the wider parts of the cell body from the peripheral parts of the cell body you can see some projections these projections are called dendrites these projections are called dendrites and one projection of the cell body one projection of the cell body somewhat longer than remaining dendrites than remaining dendrites this longest this longest dendrite is called axon this longest is, uh, dendrite is called axon on the surface of the axon there is uh, some layer that is called as myelin sheath myelin myelin sheath myelin sheath myelin sheath this myelin sheath is white in color that is why the axon of the nerve cell is always in the white in color is always in the white in color and some space or some gaps are there in the myelin sheath these are called these gaps are called nodes of ranveer nodes of ranveer nodes of ranveer these are called these gaps are nodes 
of axon is called nodes of runwear you know these myelin sheath is made up of swan cells what are they swan cells swan cells okay for a better understanding i am telling you our important points regarding to the nerve cell okay if i want to uh, tell about the nerve cell elaboratedly i need uh, uh, three or four hours okay for uh, your examination pattern uh, i am telling you uh, only a few important parts about this one okay here cell body cell body consists of uh, uh, a nucleus and also cell body is uh, a place for the uh, promote projections called dendrites so, uh, one dendrite of the uh, neuron is somewhat longer when compared with the other uh, dendrite that is called as axon axon is uh, covered by myelin sheath myelin sheath is made up of uh, swan cells clear so here it is a structure of nerve cell it is a structure of nerve cell you know in our body 10 billions of nerve cells are there 10 billions of nerve cells are there in our nervous system you know that and uh, these nerve cells are always combined with one and each other one and each other for example if it is a nerve cell it is combined with another nerve cell it is combined with another nerve cell and uh, this another nerve cell is combined with one more uh, nerve cell so if the nerve cell uh, starts from here it is combined with another one it is also combined with another one like this way each and every nerve cell is combined with uh, surrounding nerve cells surrounding nerve cells is it clear okay why it should be combined with others why it should be combined with others for the transmission of the information for the transmission of the information the nerve cell should be combined with the other ones why because if anybody touches me here the information will uh, will goes to a uh, brain first it goes to brain first for the passes or transmission of the information the nerve cells should be combined with uh, one and other for example a nerve cell is here it should be combined with another one it should be combined with another one like this way information is uh, passing on or transmitting from one by one one by one one by one so while the information going on some amount of uh, power is generated between the two nerve cells generated between the two nerve cells that must be in uh, 0.05 milli volts 0.05 milli volts uh, power is generated when the information is going uh, forward by uh, nerve cell to nerve cell nerve cell to nerve cell is it clear next uh, the connections between the connections between the two nerve cells are called synapse what is that synapse synapse this is an active area this is an active area in between the two nerve cell in between the two nerve cell so uh, what is synapse what is synapse the reaction center the reaction center for two nerve cells uh, and uh, we can say it uh, in a, in other way that is called the connection between two nerve cells the connection between two nerve cells is called synapse the connection between uh, two nerves is also synapse okay it is most important uh, for one more question but in your exam there is no one more question but uh, it is better uh, to remain in your brain okay so synapse is nothing but uh, connection between two nerve cells connection between two nerve cells clear and now we have to discuss about uh, central nervous system parts first one brain what is that brain so all you know our nervous system is uh, made up of nerve cells only only nerve cells in the spinal cord and uh, in the brain everywhere we can find everywhere we can find uh, nerve cells you know central nervous system is mainly are of uh, two types brain and spinal cord brain and spinal cord let us discuss about uh, brain first brain proportionate to our body weight our brain is very large in the size when compare with any animal when compare with any animal and also it is very matured and it is very matured so human body our uh, brain is very large in the size uh, um, and also it is very matured and compare with any other organism right and you know the brain is protected by protected by 
a bony like structure called cranium what is that cranium cranium so cranium is nothing but a bony like structure in this usually the brain is protected the brain is protected and uh, let us discuss about the internal part of the brain the internal part of the brain you know this is part this is a place for the brain this is place for the brain <coughs> when uh, we are talking about the brain the brain is covered by three membranes the brain is covered by three membranes the brain is covered by three membranes these three membranes are called meninges meninges the three membranes are called as meninges in between three uh, layers there is a fluid fill field that is called as uh, cerebral fluid cerebral fluid cerebral fluid which protects the brain from the shocks and the jerks coming from outside okay it is protecting the brain from the shocks and jerks which is coming from outside clear and you know the main part of the nervous system is uh, cerebrum what is that cerebrum what is that cerebrum and this cerebrum is a part of fore brain this is a part of fore brain so let us discuss about uh, a fore brain let us discuss about fore brain fore brain it is consist of three important parts again you know that if it is brain if we say like this okay it consists of three important parts first one is olfactory lobes here or anywhere it is locates and uh, this is all called as cerebrum this is all called as cerebrum this is also called as cerebrum in the inside of the cerebrum we can see in the inside of the cerebrum we can see diencephalon dien diencephalon so cerebrum this is all called as cerebrum and inner part we can see diencephalon you can see diencephalon and also all factory lobes are so there in the diencephalon and uh, cerebrum areas these are three important parts uh, in fore brain you know the cerebrum is uh, classified into four lobes again four lobes it is classified into four lobes and also the entire cerebrum is divided into two equal halves two equal halves and each ha half is called as hemisphere 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 so each part is called as hemisphere cerebral hemisphere cerebral hemisphere so here cerebrum is classified into two equal halves each half is called as hemisphere hemisphere right okay let us discuss what is happening in the forebrain what is happening in the forebrain you know these olfactory lobes are responsible for these olfactory lobes are responsible for smell sense of smell sense of smell all factory lobes are present in forebrain they are responsible for the smell they are responsible for the smell and uh, cerebrum this is a very very important part in the forebrain and it is responsible for the memory reasoning and thinking and problem solving problem solving and etc etc so many works are done here and uh, for example we are telling that uh, memory and thinking and reasoning and uh, problem solving and uh, these things are happening in the uh, cerebrum part okay now let us discuss about uh, diencephalon you know diencephalon is again classified into thalamus and hypothalamus hypothalamus is belongs to hormone system right here thalamus is only belongs to nervous system clear right so here in the diencephalon it is responsible for the pain temperature and water balance water balance and hunger 
and anger and sleep so these all are happens due to the diencephalon this is a, a reaction center for the sleep anger hunger water balance pain and temperature so these all things are under diencephalon and let us discuss about a mid brain let us discuss about mid brain if it is brain if it is brain the outer part is called outer part it is called for brain for brain the inner part is called the inner part is called mid brain the inner part is called mid brain the inner part is called mid brain okay uh, if we talk about the mid brain we have to discuss about one thing sight and hearing it is responsible for the sight and the hearing <laughs> if we are able to see uh, one thing that is cause uh, mid brain and uh, we are hearing something uh, due to cause of uh, mid brain so this is a reaction center for the reaction center for the hear this is reaction center for the hearing sorry hearing and also sight so sight and hearing are uh, uh, happening due to mid brain sight and hearing are due to uh, mid brain and also third one hind brain third one is hind brain in the hind brain we can see two important parts cerebellum and second one is medulla oblongata okay so here <coughs> cerebellum cerebellum is very very important part in our nervous system again why because it is responsible for the two important things two important things that is called posture posture and equilibrium posture and equilibrium held in a cerebrum posture means uh, our body should have a posture like this if we bend like this uh, some uh, bad uh, i will be happen to our body why because uh, our uh, spinal cord will uh, uh, appear like this after some time uh, sometimes or some days okay that is why how to be like this if our posture is good uh, our health also will be good and one right <coughs> and uh, equilibrium also dull with the help of the uh, cerebellum right and also it is doing uh, voluntary voluntary actions promoted by promoted by cerebrum if any uh, voluntary action promoted by the cerebrum that will be follows uh, by the uh, cerebellum so all uh, voluntary uh, actions motor actions uh, will be uh, done uh, which is initiated by the uh, cerebrum <coughs> okay so here cerebellum is doing voluntary actions which are sent by the cerebrum so here it is doing three things it gives us posture and also equilibrium and also third one it is doing voluntary actions initiated by the cerebrum so here three things are doing by uh, cerebrum cerebellum sorry cerebellum and uh, last one medulla oblongata medulla oblongata you know medulla oblongata is also a very important part in the uh, nervous system it is uh, very very important actually so it is responsible for the it is responsible for the cardiac and vasomotor vasomotor and respiratory actions so all our respiration and cardiac uh, function and vasomotor function vasomotor function is nothing but uh, blood vessels so blood vessels movement and also cardiac heart movement heart functioning and also respiratory system all these three things works under uh, medulla oblongata so it is regulating uh, heart function vasomotor function and uh, respiratory function also and also it is participating in some actions called swallowing and sneezing sneezing and coughing 
and coughing and vomiting and vomiting so these type of uh, all uh, functions are uh, held with the help of the medulla oblongata so medulla oblongata is responsible for cardiac functions vasomotor functions respiratory functions and swallowing sneezing coughing vomiting these all functions are worked under the medulla oblongata this is only about brain this is only about brain let us discuss about the spinal cord all you know spinal cord is not only a solid structure it is containing it is containing number of neurons number of nerve cells so these nerve cells are responsible for the transmitting of messages from organs to brain brain to organs from the detector to effector you know what is detector and what is effector let us discuss about that let us discuss about that let us discuss about uh, uh, detector and effector okay let us discuss about that detector and sensory nerves and brain are spinal cord spinal cord and motor nerve motor nerve then affector organ affector organ so here we can see five important parts five important parts you know in our body each and every cell which appears outside is works as detector is works as detector you know with each cell our nervous system is connected with uh, nerves with nerve cells for example if anybody touches me here the cells around this place will receive the information will receive the stimulus and these receiving cells these information or the stimulus receiving cells are called as detectors these detectors will receive the information and transmit to the sensory nerves where it is transmitting the information to the sensory nerves again this sensory nerve is transmitting the information to the brain or spinal cord sometimes spinal cord also analyze the information and uh, gives the response usually the information should reach the brain then the brain will analyze the information analyze the stimulus and it is used to release the response but sometimes spinal cord also participating in the uh, giving uh, responses okay so the sensory nerve main function is to give or transmit the information to the brain or spinal cord when this brain or spinal cord receives the information they use it to analyze the information analyze the stimulus and then they release the response so these responses will transmit with the help of the motor nerves with the help of the motor nerves this motor nerve this motor nerve will gives the information to the effector nerve will gives the information to the effector nerve the motor nerve is giving the information to the effector nerve but this information is a response the information is response these responses are used usually releases by brain or spinal cord so this response is uh, carry forwarding with the help of the motor nerve this motor nerve is uh, carrying carrying the response to the effector nerve then this effector nerve is works for example if anybody touches here immediately the information is detected by the detector and send the information to the sensory nerve to the brain or uh, spinal cord then spinal cord and brain are uh, giving the response this response is carry forward with the help of the motor nerve this motor nerve is uh, uh, passing the response to the effector nerve if the information uh, comes to the hand like we have to drag your hand back then the hand will be drag like this we will pass our hand like this okay so here passing of my hand a moving of a hand is uh, only happen with the help of uh, five five uh, factors first factor is detector 
okay it is uh, detected it is detected the information okay and it is passing the information to the sensory nerve sensory nerve carry the information to the brain and brain uh, carry the response to the uh, motor nerve and then uh, motor nerve is carrying the response from the brain and spinal cord to the effector nerve okay here we are seeing uh, uh, here we are seeing uh, five factors five factors this uh, entire diagram is the pathway this entire pathway is called this entire pathway is called reflex arc reflex arc reflex arc so reflex arc is a nothing but uh, reflex arc is nothing but uh, a signal pathway signal pathway signal pathway of the information signal pathway of the information is called reflex arc in the reflex arc we can see five factors detector sensory nerve brain and motor nerve and effector okay these are cells usually seen in uh, reflex arc here uh, you have to know sensory nerve and motor nerve sensory nerve and motor nerve the main purpose of the sensory nerve the main function of the sensory nerve is to gather information from the detector and carry information to the brain or spinal cord so it is only carrying the stimulus only so the sensory nerves only appears outside of our body right so here the motor nerve is receiving the response receiving the response from the brain or spinal cord so it is uh, comes under inward parts of our body inward parts of our body it not uh, looking uh, appearing outside the appearing outside part is called uh, sensory nerve okay motor nerve is always in inside okay it will works in uh, our body okay it will works in our body only it not appears outside clear so the main function of the sensory nerve is to carry the impulse to the brain and the main function of the motor nerve is to carry the response to the effector organ to the effector organ so entire this pathway is called as a reflex arc how many parts are there in a reflex arc five parts so detector and sensory nerve brain or spinal cord and motor nerve and effector organ this is called a reflex arc so by this one you have to understand uh, one thing so nerve cells are mainly are of uh, three types among these three we already discussed about sensory nerve and then motor nerve and third one also there that is called associate nerve what is that associate nerves associate nerves associate nerve associate nerve this associate nerves are uh, generally appeared in the spinal cord generally appeared in spinal cord okay so here we are discussing about types of uh, neurons types of nerve cells first one is sensory nerve it takes the information from the detector and carry to the brain and motor nerve it takes or receives the response from the brain and it send the response to the effector organ our third one is called associate nerve associate nerve it only appears in it only appears in spinal cord you know sometimes information is may not uh, go to our brain the information reaches up to spinal cord only up to spinal cord only when the information reaches the spinal cord the nerve cells called associate nerves are analyzing are analyzing the information and immediately they are releasing they are releasing responses from them okay so here the information is not going to the brain here it is <coughs> not going to the brain uh, why because associated nerves in the spinal cord are analyzing and responding and also giving responses then the motor nerves are carry forward the response uh, to the effector organ okay so why uh, it is happening like this uh, in some situations in a very dangerous situation this type of actions are generally uh, held uh, for example if i am uh, putting my leg like this on the sharp object if the sharp object touches my feet you uh, i used to uh, drag my leg uh, back side like this why because immediately the uh, associate nerves in, our, in my spinal cord are analyzing the sharp object is there and also you have to drag your uh, leg back so 
So, in this way it is uh, giving me some instructions. If the information goes to brain it may takes more time when compared with the uh, associated uh, associated uh, nerves response ok. That is why from uh, uh, some dangerous situations uh, it is uh, um, escaping us ok. It is escaping us from uh, some dangerous situations uh, ok. So, spinal cord is also having uh, some nerves are they are called as associate nerves. Associate nerves only appear in uh, spinal cord. They are participating in uh, some uh, Mm, autonomous autonomous uh, uh, autonomous actions autonomous actions uh, which means uh, the information uh, uh, may not be go to the spinal cord uh, may not go to the brain ok. Some information comes to the spinal cord uh, and uh, associate nerves will analyze and uh, gives a response the response will uh, uh, goes with the help of the motor nerve to the effector organ clear ok. So, here we discuss about uh, Nerve cells, ok. Nerve cells are mainly are of three types first one is sensory nerve, second one is motor nerve, third one is associate nerves, clear, ok. Let us discuss about uh, a peripheral nervous system. Let us discuss about peripheral nervous system, peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system is nothing but autonomous nervous system, peripheral nervous system is nothing but autonomous nervous system. autonomous nervous system autonomous nervous system. So, autonomous nervous system is involving in involuntary actions in involuntary actions involuntary actions means they are happening without our involvement without our involvement for example, heartbeat here we are not involving in the beating of heart, but it is uh, uh, doing it function and also circulation of the blood ok, dilation of our uh, uh, people and also excretion uh, digestion. So, what functions are happening in our body are also called as uh, involuntary functions. These all involuntary functions are held with the help of the autonomous nervous system. You know autonomous nervous system again classified into two types sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic and parasympathetic. So, these are uh, two types of uh, autonomous nervous system sympathetic ner uh, nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system these are main types of uh, autonomous nervous system. Simply have to remember one thing autonomous nervous system is involving in the involuntary actions involuntary actions are nothing but they are happening without our involvement they are only happening their function they are doing their function uh, with their uh, consciousness without our consciousness is it clear ok. Let us discuss about uh, coordination in our body without nerves, coordination in our body without nerves, coordination in our body without nerves. Already I told you that uh, coordination in our body is occurring with the help of uh, two systems, first one is nervous system, second one is uh, hormone system, what is that hormone system. Second one is hormone system, right? Let us discuss one by one. In our body, we have seven glands. Seven glands. These glands are called. These glands are called endocrine glands. Endocrine glands. Endocrine glands. Endocrine glands. Which means they doesn't have any tiles. They are directly attached to the body parts they are directly attached to the body parts in our body ok. That is why they are called as endocrine glands. You know these endocrine glands secretions are called hormones. These endocrine glands secretions are called hormones. So, hormones are chemical materials these chemical materials are releasing from the uh, endocrine glands ok. These chemical materials are releasing from the endocrine glands ok. So, here hormones are releasing into blood only. They, they are releasing into blood only ok. When the hormone uh, releasing into the blood it will uh, transport entire the body with the help of the blood. It will transport 
entire body with the help of the blood okay so you have to remember one thing hormones directly combining with the blood okay hormones are released by endocrine glands hormones are released by endocrine glands it should be uh, remember okay it should be very important and also we have to discuss about uh, what glands are called as uh, endocrine glands in our body and uh, discuss one by one pituitary gland pituitary gland and thyroid gland thyroid gland next adrenal gland adrenal gland then pancreas pancreas testis vavari and a parathyroid gland parathyroid gland here we have uh, seven uh, endocrine glands seven endocrine glands pituitary gland parathyroid gland and thyroid gland adrenal gland pancreas testis and vavari let us discuss one by one let us discuss one by one you know pituitary gland pituitary gland is a part of is a part of hypothalamus hypothalamus is a part of diencephalon diencephalon is a part of forebrain so it is appearing it is appearing in the nervous system in the nervous system it is in the size of pea seed it is in the size of pea seed and it is also called as master gland of master gland of all glands it is also called as master gland of all glands okay and uh, it is releasing a number of hormones it is releasing number of hormones so let us discuss one by one first one is somatotropic hormone or somatotropic or somatotropic hormone gonadotropic hormone tsh thyroid thyroid stimulating hormone thyroid stimulating hormone acth adreno cortico tropic hormone adreno cortico tropic hormone and lh and lh luteinizing hormone luteinizing hormone and fsh follicle stimulating hormone and vasopressin vasopressin so these are hormones releasing by the pituitary gland these are hormones releasing by the pituitary gland somatotropic hormone is responsible for the growth general growth growth it is also called as somatotropic hormone is also called as a growth hormone if it is released in the sufficient amount then the growth is good in the human body if it is not releasing the sufficient amount the growth is not good okay then a dwarfism may be occurs dwarfism okay and uh, gonadotropic hormone it is a hormone worked on uh, testis testis in the male and uh, vavari in female vavari in female <coughs> it motivates testis and vavari for their functions and third one is tsh thyroid stimulating hormone you know thyroid gland is there 
it is also endocrine gland but uh, this tsh is released by the pituitary gland and this thyroid stimulating hormone is stimulate the thyroid gland for its activities it functions so the main uh, purpose of the tsh is to motivate to motivate the thyroid gland for their functions okay so this is coming from the pituitary gland all you know that this pituitary gland is releasing various uh, hormones these hormones are working on other endocrine glands other endocrine gland that is why it is called as master gland it is called as master gland it influences it influences all the glands in the uh, hormone system right and uh, acth adreno corticotropic hormone adreno corticotropic hormone this hormone is releasing by the pituitary gland but acts on adrenal gland but acts on adrenal gland so it motivates the adrenal gland for its functions for it functions and then we have to discuss about lh luteinizing hormone luteinizing hormone so luteinizing hormone is uh, responsible for the it is responsible for the releasing of releasing of testosterone testosterone hormone testosterone hormone in males in males and also this luteinizing hormone is responsible for the releasing of the releasing of ovulation ovulation that mean ovulation it means ovulation and also it promotes the releasing of progesterone hormone progesterone hormone so here it is doing three important functions three important function <laughs> in males it promotes the testosterone hormone okay and in females it is promoting the ovulation and also releasing the progesterone hormone progesterone hormone the progesterone hormone let us discuss about uh, fsh follicle stimulating hormone <coughs> the name is indicating that it is helping in the development of follicles hormone follicle stimulating hormone and also it is helping in it is helping in releasing of oxytocin hormone oxytocin hormone and oxytocin hormone and also with the okay it is also promotes the hormone called estrogen estro gen hormone in female in female okay in boys or male in boys or male sperm these are uh, main important uh, uh, hormones released by the pituitary gland and also one important thing is there vasopressin vasopressin which is also released by the pituitary gland it participates in it participates in reducing the reducing the water in urine reducing the water in the urine you know in some people uh, uh, the people are used to go for urination a number of times or four times or five times or six times so uh, repeated urination is occurs in some people because they are uh, suffering with the deficiency of the vasopressin hormone if the vasopressin hormone is not released by the pituitary gland then urine is uh, uh, comes continuously or uh, regularly and uh, there is no gaps in the urination so repeated urination may be occurs when the vasopressin is uh, uh, low in the people okay so this is responsible for the reducing the water in the urine reducing the water in the urine it reabsorb the water in the urine okay for example it is uh, a uh, deficiency uh, if this deficiency occurs in the uh, male then he suffered with uh, diabetes uh, diabetes insipidus insipidus diabetes insipidus so diabetes insipidus is a disease caused when the levels of the vasopressin decreased in the human body okay if the vasopressin Uh, is not released in the proper amount then the person will suffers with uh, the diabetes insipidus that means uh, repeated urination may be occurs within him okay next let us discuss about uh, parathyroid gland parathyroid gland
let us discuss parathyroid gland so parathyroid gland is located at our neck okay our neck it's located at our neck it releases parathormon 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 hormone this is a hormone released by the parathyroid gland it is responsible for the synthesis of calcium and magnesium calcium and phosphorus calcium and phosphorus calcium and phosphorus are usually synthesized by the help of parathormon it is uh, released by the parathyroid gland parathyroid gland if the parathormon hormone is high in the body then some disease may occurs that is called a tetani that is called as tetani tetani it is called as tetani tetani is a disease when the when the parathormon hormone is high in the body right let us discuss about the thyroid gland the thyroid gland is um, a place for the general growth of the body general growth of the body so general growth is uh, works under the thyroid gland and along with the somatotropic hormone somatotropic hormone is released by a uh, gland called pituitary gland okay so somatotropic hormone and uh, thyroid gland these two are coordinate each other for the giving growth to the body okay for the giving growth to the body so thyroid gland is also responsible for the general growth general growth general growth about adrenal gland adrenal gland you know adrenal gland is releasing adrenaline hormone adrenaline hormone adrenaline hormone adrenaline hormone this adrenal hormone is generally released in situations for example if any word if anybody beats me if anybody beats me then immediately i feel pain immediately i will cry if anybody made a mistake in front of me i will be anger within minutes within seconds so these emotions occurs due to the adrenaline hormone due to the adrenaline hormone so adrenaline hormone is a hormone for the emotions is a hormone for the emotions okay here it is also called as fight or flight hormone or flight hormone fight or flight flight in a particular situation fight or flight in a particular situation clear and then it is also called as it is also called as feedback mechanism hormone mechanism hormone it is also feedback mechanism hormone so here we are discussing uh, three important parts about uh, adrenaline uh, hormone adrenaline hormone first one is it is fight or flight hormone fight or flight hormone and also it is hormone for the emotions and also it is a feedback mechanism hormone so feedback is occurs due to the adrenaline hormone feedback is uh, main, mainly occurs due to the feedback mechanism mainly occurs due to adrenaline hormone adrenaline hormone clear let us discuss about uh, pancreas let us discuss about pancreas so pancreas is uh, ambixid gland pancreas is ambixid gland pancreas is ambixid gland pancreas is mixed gland why it is considering into mixed gland because it is participating in the digestive system as it is releasing enzymes and also it is releasing hormones that is why it is uh, uh, connected with both the digestive system and hormone system so two type of uh, secretions it is doing it is uh, participating in the secreting two type of uh, uh, chemical materials one is enzyme another one is hormone that is why it is called as mixed gland mixed gland by by its means uh, it is releasing enzymes and hormones that is why the pancreas is called mixed gland the pancreas uh, is having some cells called isolates isolates 
of longer hands isolates of longer hands isolates of longer hands so, so these are cells in the pancreas these are cells in the pancreas these cells usually releases a hormone called uh, insulin insulin and also one more uh, hormone is also released by that <laughs> that is called glucagon glucagon so these two hormones generally released by the pancreas the pancreas cells are called uh, isolates of longer hands and the pancreas is also called as a mixed gland mixed gland is releasing two type of hormones insulin and glucagon let us discuss about uh, insulin so you know insulin is very important uh, chemical very important hormone to our body if the insulin is not sufficient in our body then glucose in our body will comes with our urine so it is very dangerous to our health that is why the glucose which is in our uh, blood must be stored in somewhere okay so insulin is taking responsibility for the storing of glucose in our body okay where it is storing the material is the insulin is storing the glucose to convert or by convert time note share is ok sir ok here the insulin is converts the glucose into glycogen insulin is converting the glucose into glycogen and stores in liver stores in liver when we are uh, in fasting when our body needs energy then the liver will lose its glycogen into glucose it loses its glycogen into glucose okay so let us discuss about uh, glucagon let us discuss about uh, glucagon the glucagon is a hormone to convert the glycogen into glucose for example when we are doing a uh, uh, fasting we need some energy as we are not taking uh, entire the day that is why we need some energy this energy is coming from the liver All, already you know that uh, liver is uh, containing some food uh, as in the form of glycogen so here the glucagon hormone will release from the pancreas and uh, it converts the glycogen into the glucose then uh, we will get some energy from the glucose so in this way the conversion of glucose into glycogen due to the cause of insulin and the conversion of the glycogen into the glucose is called uh, because of uh, glucagon the conversion of the glycogen into glucose due to the cause of glucagon hormone so these two are released by the pancreas you know in some people the insulin hormone is uh, releasing in a little amount then they face uh, uh, some uh, disease called uh, diabetes uh, mellitus diabetes diabetes uh, mellitus diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus in this uh, a disease uh, they will lose uh, uh, entire uh, glucose molecules from their body through the urine okay so it may leads uh, some uh, some harmful uh, sort of harmful health uh, uh, problems okay that is why the doctor usually suggest them to inject uh, some uh, inject some uh, injections uh, just like uh, uh, insulin so insulin is a hormone is generally injected into the body who are uh, suffering with uh, diabetes mellitus so this is only option for the diabetes patients so in this diabetes patients they are losing their glucose through the urine so for the tra- stoppage of the losing of the glucose uh, we are giving them uh, insulin injection so here insulin and glucagon are hormones released by the pancreas okay insulin is responsible for the conversion of glucose into glycogen and the glucagon is a responsible for the conversion of glycogen into glucose so when do diabetes mellitus occurs when the person is suffering with a uh, decrease of uh, amount of uh, insulin then they face uh, diabetes mellitus and the amount of the insulin is reduced in the body then they face or uh, diabetes mellitus disease 
ओके लेट आर डिस्कस अबउट टेस्टिस लेट आर डिस्कस अबउट टेस्टिस यू नो टेस्टिस ओनली अपीयर्स इन द आ मेल इट इज लोकेट्स इन द स्क्वाटल सैक इट इज लोकेट्स इन द स्क्वाटल सैक दिस टेस्टिस इज रिजिंग टेस्टोस्टेर हारमोन टेस्टोस्टेर हारमोन टेस्टोस्टेर हारमोन इज रिज बै टेस्टिस द टेस्टोस्टेर हारमोन इज प्रमोट्स द प्रैमरी अंड सैकंडरी सेक्सुअल क्यार्टर्स इन द मेल प्रैमरी क्यार्टर्स मीन स्पेरमटोजेनि स्पेरमटोजेनि and it is also uh, promotes the secondary sexual characters a uh, growing of a beard and mustache in the face uh, and the uh, armpits uh, and also it promotes the development of our uh, uh, muscles and uh, a ch- change of the voice a change of the voice okay in this way it is uh, promoting uh, uh, you know, some changes in our body like uh, change in the voice uh, development of muscles uh, and uh, growing hairs on our face uh, and arm fits uh, okay like this it is uh, uh, promoting some functions in the male okay <coughs> the hormone released by the testes is called testosterone okay it is promoting uh, primary and secondary sexual characters all you know that and also uh, ovary ovary locates in only females okay ovary locates in only female this ovary is responsible for the overall growth of the a uh, female reproductive system which means uh, development of the uterus development of the uterus controlling the entire uh, entire uh, menstrual cycle entire menstrual cycle and development muscles at the pelvis region this may, uh, pelvis means this area so development at the pelvis region and the development of the skeletal regions uh, skeleton parts and also it participates in the uh, um, menstrual cycle it promotes the menstrual cycle and also it participates in uh, entire entire uh, female reproductive system development it also participates in the development of uterus so these are uh, uh, important uh, functions of ovary generally ovary is releasing uh, two hormones called uh, two hormones called first one is estrogen second one is progesterone estrogen and progesterone these are two hormones released by the ovary generally these two together these two together works on uh, reproductive system okay right let us discuss about uh, uh, reproduct uh, sorry note chain and this let us discuss uh, control and coordination happens in the plants i mean control in plants control in plants control in plants you know plants also releasing some hormone like structures hormone like uh, uh, materials from them so they are also called as hormones they are called as a uh, uh, plant hormones plants also release plant hormones so these are chemical materials released by Uh, the plants so releasing by the plants let us discuss one by one auxins gibberellins and uh, cytokinins and uh, ethylene 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 abscisic acid these are hormones generally appeared in plants these are hormones generally appeared in plants so let us let us discuss one by one okay axins these are hormones released by the plants you know that and these are responsible for these are responsible for the uh, promotion of the promotion of elongation elongation of cells elongation it participates in elongation of cell and also it participates in uh, differentiation differentiation shoot and root shoot and root 
shoot and root it participates in elongation of cells and differentiation in shoot and root differentiation shoot and root differentiation shoot and root and jebber lens jebber lens are very very important uh, uh, hormones releasing by the plants they are promoting they are promoting overall growth in the plant overall growth in the plant they are promoting overall growth in the plants like uh, development of fruit development of stem development of leaf so in this way it is promoting entire growth of the plant and also it promotes uh, it promotes germination germination of seeds germination of seeds that means that means breakdown of breakdown of dormancy breakdown of dormancy breakdown of dormancy and uh, another thing cytokinins cytokinins it is uh, promoting cell division cell division it promotes cell division it promotes cell division and also these are responsible for the uh, opening of stomata opening of stomata opening of stomata and ethylene ethylene is a hormone uh, useful for uh, the ripening of fruits ripening of fruits so ethylene is a hormone it is uh, useful for uh, ripening of fruits ripening of fruits and abscisic acid abscisic acid which promotes closing of stomata closing of stomata closing of stomata and uh, seed dormancy seed dormancy very very important things these are very very important things so from this chart uh, we can expect questions from uh, these two one first one is uh, cytokinin second one is abscisic acid and third one is axins 1 2 3 we can expect questions from these three cytokinins it is uh, promoting cell division opening of stomata opening of stomata and uh, abscisic acid it promotes the closing of stomata that is responsible for opening of stomata it is responsible for closing of stomata and also it promotes seed dormancy seed dormancy okay but here uh jebberlins are responsible for uh, breakdown of dormancy breakdown of dormancy let us discuss third one about uh, axins it promotes the elongation of cells it promotes the elongation of cells and also differentiation of shoots and roots uh, held in the axins held in the axins so these are very very important uh, which we discussed in the chart okay and you know axins are discovered by f w went f w went who discovered axins f w went okay in this chart we have to discuss uh, one particular thing uh, that is axins that is axins axins are very very important hormones in the plants which not only promotes the elongation of cell and differentiate the shoots and root it also part participates in it is also participates in uh, tropisms tropisms so let us discuss what are tropisms what are tropisms you know tropism is nothing but uh, movement of growth movement of growth movement of growth is called as uh, tropism you know plants generally showing uh, some tropisms let us discuss about <coughs> phototropism and uh, chemotropism and uh, hydrotropism uh, geotropism and thigmotropism these are tropisms these are tropisms so you can see these are tropisms in plants 
okay these all tropisms are uh, happening due to the cause of axins axins are responsible for these all tropism these all tropism so let us discuss what is tropism tropism is nothing but uh, growth of the plant towards a particular material towards a particular material for the plant to grow towards the light towards the light then the plant will grows towards the light for example if we put a potted plant in the dark room if you if you put a, a, a potted plant in the dark room the uh, plant will grows towards the light the plant will grows towards the light okay that is why if the plant grows towards the light that is called as phototropism phototropism so growth of the plant towards the photo light means phototropism phototropism this phototropism is due to cause of axins and second one is chemotropism growth of the plant towards the chemical towards the chemical is called chemotropism growth of the plants towards the chemical is called chemotropism which is also <coughs> due to axins and also hydrotropism growth of the plant towards the water hydrotropism and geotropism you know the plant is growing uh, uh, towards upward direction in the same way roots also grow inside towards the uh, geo uh, geotropism that means uh, uh, the plant is growing in the direction of uh, upward direction the plant is growing towards the upward direction in the same way roots also grow inside of the soil okay so growth of the roots due to the cause of geotropism due to the cause of geotropism so this geotropism is cause of uh, axins so okay so axins are promoting geotropism geotropism nothing but growth of the roots towards the uh, gravitational force towards the gravitational force growth of the roots towards the gravitational force is called uh, geotropism okay growth of the roots towards the uh, gravitational force is called geotropism okay next uh, fifth one uh, thigmotropism thigmotropism thigma means nothing but uh, uh, a base a support a base or support you know tendrils tendrils cucumber uh, and uh, a better god these are tendrils if they have any support uh, they will grow with the help of uh, that support okay so if the plant grows towards the support that is called thigmotropism that is called thigmotropism and uh, one more important bit uh, from this lesson is uh, <coughs> mimosa pudica mimosa pudica or touch me not touch me not touch me not plant mimosa podica or touch me not plant showing what type of tropism what type of tropism that is called thigmotropism so here mimosa podica when you touches that uh, plant it will immediately folds uh, it branches like this okay this movement is nothing but uh, thigmotropism thigmo nasty what is that thigmo nasty where we can find the thigmo nasty <coughs> mimosa podica is showing thigmo nasty okay it's very very big uh, important bit thigmonasty is showing by mimosa pudica which is also which is also happening with the help of axins so axins are very very important uh, hormones in the plants which promotes uh, not only elongation of the cell and differentiation of shoot and root it also participates in phototropism chemotropism hydrotropism and geotropism and thigmotropism okay <coughs> thank you thank you very much